Hey everyone, welcome back. In this tutorial, we are going to look at HashMap. Now, HashMap implements the map interface. It is used to store data in key value pairs. Now, since it implements the map interface, it allows duplicate values, but it does not allow duplicate keys. So all keys in a hash map will be unique, okay? It also does not maintain the insertion order. And the underlying data structure over here is a hash table, right? Now let's create a hash map. Now let me import the hash map class. So as you can see, I've created a hash map over here called color map, which will store color code and color name. Okay. So our color code will be an integer, which will act as the key and color name will be a string, which will act as the value, right? Now let's add some key value pairs to this map. Now, map interface has different methods if you compare it with list or set. And that is because list and set implements the collection interface, whereas map does not implement the collection interface. It has its own hierarchy, right? So it will have different set of methods. Okay. So for adding entries into a hash map, we have a method called put. So I'm just going to say color map dot put and here I'll specify the key, which is one. And here I'll specify the value, which is red. So the first parameter is the key and the second parameter is the value. And each key value pair is called an entry. Okay. Now I'll just add a few more entries to our hash map. Let's say two comma green, three comma blue and four comma yellow. So these are the keys and these are the values. Now this put method it returns us a string value. Now, what is this string? So first let's look at how these values are inserted into our hash map. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, add a duplicate key to our map. So I'll just copy paste uh, one of the key value pairs again, and I'll just change the value, right? So we have a duplicate key in our map. Okay. Now, even though a hash map does not allow duplicate keys, we will not get any compile time error over here. So we'll see what happens exactly. So in the first three cases, these key value pairs will be inserted successfully into our hash map. But in this case, since this key is already present into our map, this put method will not add this key again. Okay. So it will just override its old value with the new one. So for key three, the old value is blue and the new value is white. So it will just override this old value with the new one. Okay. And our put method will return us that old value. Okay. So in this case, it will return us blue, but in the first three cases, we are not overriding or replacing any old value. So it will return us null. Okay. But in this case, we have an old value, which is overridden and that is blue. Okay. Again, in this case, we will get the output as null. So what we'll do is we'll just add a system dot out dot statement. Uh, just to see what we get as the output. Okay. And afterwards we'll just remove these statements again. Okay. So I'm just copy pasting it to each statement. Now let's run this program. And yes, in the first three cases we are getting null and here we are getting blue and again we are getting null. So this is the expected output. Okay. Now I'll just undo these changes. Okay. Yes. Now the return type of this put method, it depends on the type of our value. So if our value is of type integer, okay, then it will return as integer type of data. If our value is of type student, it will return as a student object and so on. Now in this case, our value is of type string. So it will return us a string type of data. Now, as I said before, each key value pair in our hash map is called an entry, right? So this is an entry and this becomes an entry set. Okay. So we have created a hash map and we have added some key value pairs to it. Now we are going to iterate over this hash map and display these key value pairs one by one. Okay. Now again, over here, we have different ways or methods of iterating. So the first way which we are going to see is by using a for each loop, right? So first I'll just print a statement on the screen that is using for each loop. 
Now, as I said before, each key value pair in a hash map or a map is called an entry. And as a result, a collection of these key value pairs will become an entry set. Okay. So we are going to run a for each loop, which says for each entry inside our entry set, we are going to print the keys and values, right? Now, first, let me import this map interface. Okay. Now, as you can see over here, our entry is of type map dot entry. Okay. So map is our interface and entry is another interface, which is inside our map interface. Okay. And its type is integer comma string. Okay. So our entry is of type integer and string. Okay. And that is because our hash map is of integer and string, right? And over here we have color map dot entry set. Now inside this for loop, we are just printing the, the keys and values, and that will be by using uh, these methods that is get key and get value, which are again part of our entry object. Okay. Now the next method is by using an iterator. So again, I'll print a statement on the screen first, that is using iterator. And now I'm going to create an iterator object. Okay. So this is our iterator object. Now again, our iterator is of type entry, which is again of integer and string. And uh, over here we have color map dot entry set dot iterator. Okay. So this is how we create an iterator object for our map. Right now, let me import this uh, iterator interface. Okay. And now we are going to run a while loop. So it says while itr dot has next. Okay. So this will go on till the time this uh, iterator has records into it. And inside that we are saying itr dot next. Okay. So this next method is going to return us an entry object, which we are going to capture in an entry reference, right? And after that, we are just going to print the keys and values using the get key and get value methods. Okay. So this was the second way or second method of iterating over a map, right? Now the next way is by using the for each method of Java eight. Okay. So I'll just print a statement using for each method. And here I'll just say color map dot for each. And inside this for each method, we can pass a Lambda expression. So Lambda expressions were uh, introduced in Java eight. And here we are passing a Lambda expression, uh, which is just going to print the keys and values. Okay. So this is the third way of uh, iterating over a map. Now this for each method, uh, it can be used with all of our main collections like array list, hash set or hash map. Now in our array list tutorial, we may not have used uh, this for each method for iterating. Okay. But remember that we can also use it with array list. Okay. Now we can also iterate over the keys and values separately. That is, we can iterate over only the keys or only the values. So uh, let's iterate uh, over the keys first. So I'm just going to say iterating over keys and then I'm going to run a for each loop, which says for each key inside our key set. Okay. So key set is the method which will return us a set of keys. Okay. And then we are going to run a for each loop and just go on displaying the keys. Okay. Now here I've kept integer because we know that uh, our key is of type integer, right? So this is how we display all the keys. Now, similarly, we can also display all the values. Okay. So for that, I'm just going to say iterating over values. And similarly, I'll run a for each loop over here, which says for each value inside color map dot values. Okay. So again, here our value is of type string because we know that our map has our value of type string. Okay. And similarly inside that, I'm just going to print the value. Okay. So yeah, that's it guys. Uh, let's save this program and run it. And yes, uh, this was using for each loop. This was using the iterator. Then we have the for each method. Then we have uh, displayed only the keys and finally, we are displaying only the values, right? So this is how we iterate over a map. Okay. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you for watching and see you in my next tutorial.